What's going on everybody? I'm Slava Nitorski and welcome to the channel and I just finished watching Mortal Kombat, the new one that just came out and I definitely wanted to go over it to give my review on it. People seem to like the Nobody review that I did so I figured I'd try to say about Mortal Kombat. Plus I'm just really excited about the movie. If you can tell, I did like it. So spoilers if you didn't know or not. I enjoyed the movie quite a bit but I've been a fan of Mortal Kombat since the first video game. Now uh of course, if you do enjoy reviews, things like that, subscribe to the channel, like the video if you like it, so on and so forth. Alright, so straight into the movie. I'm going to do this how I did previously, where I do non-spoilers in the beginning, and then I give you a warning, and then we'll go over the spoilers after the warning. Also, I've had some sinus issues, so I apologize if I cough, partially through this video. I'm trying to get over that. Alright, so right off the bat... If you want to know if there are any like stingers after the credits or anything during the credits, don't worry about it. As soon as the video stops and the credits roll, there is nothing after the credits or during them. I watched on HBO Max. I don't know if that's different in the theater or not, but I can tell you on HBO, nothing changes there. Uh, there is nothing after the credits, so you can walk out of the theater if you want to and beat the crowd if there is one. <clears throat> All right, so getting straight into the movie itself, non-credits. I really enjoyed the movie. Uh, all the actors that were in it, I think, played their parts really well. I'm going to go over some names, too, at some point here. Uh, I thought it was very well. Now, of course, like all movies, it's kind of formulaic. It's uh, first act is setting up the characters. Sorry about that. The second act is putting the conflict that needs to be resolved in, and third act is the resolution of that conflict. So if you know Mortal Kombat lore, it's not really spoilers at all. The conflict is Shang Tsung wants to invade Earthrealm. So it's the resolution of that. That is the same in the game, same in this movie, same in the original movie, so on and so forth. So no spoilers there. All right, so let's go over the characters I can go over without the spoilers. Uh, if you even see the title of this movie, Scorpion and Sub-Zero are in it. It's awesome. The first seven minutes is... Uh, introduction and uh, Scorpion and Sub-Zero are in that so is uh, a new character to the franchise which is also in the trailer so it's not a spoiler uh, Cole Young is a new character made just for this movie he is not in the franchise anywhere else that I know of or have heard of I mean I could be wrong but I haven't heard of him anywhere else now cool thing uh, Sub-Zero this is kind of a cool little side tick it's played by an actor uh, Joe Taslam I think I pronounced that right I apologize if I didn't he is also in the HBO Max show Warrior, and I'm working on season one of that show right now. That is an amazing TV show, so if you haven't seen it, watch that. Dude's an awesome martial artist and a great actor. Uh, Sub Zero, or I'm sorry, Scorpion is played by Hiroyuki Sanada. He plays the role to the T. Perfect. Love him in that role. All right, I'm going to stop a character, so I don't want to get into any more spoilers. But uh, so first act is they're getting you used to introducing characters, kind of having you feel for them. Scorpion and Sub-Zero are not the main characters of the movie. But this gives you kind of an idea. Uh, Cole Young is kind of the main character of the movie. And uh, I will go into more about what's up with his story in, in the spoiler se section of this. I don't want to do that now. Because, it, it, of course, he's the main character. There's a lot to it. Alright, so uh, introduces you to the characters, gets you to feel for them, what's going on with them, kind of see what they're like. Uh, now one thing I'll say is not all characters kind of get an introduction to make you kind of, I don't know, bond with them or like them or feel them. But I also understand why, like, a lot of the characters, they don't really need an introduction. They're just the characters. If you know the games or the original movie or something like that, you know who the characters are. But... They take some uh, writer's liberties with a lot of the characters. Well, some of the characters, I should say, not a lot. And some of the stuff about the story. Again, we'll go over that in the spoiler section. Now, uh, the second part of it is the conflict that's introduced. So, of course, Shang Tsung wants to take over Earthrealm. Uh, it's kind of showing all of that there. It's pretty much exactly what you would expect. Uh, it shows all the bad guys, basically. And... Uh, sets up the conflict of who hates who the most between the good guys and bad guys and goes from there. Third act is the conclusion of that conflict. Every character kind of gets their fight that they want. 
And of course, it's not a... Well, I shouldn't say that until the spoiler section, just because, even though it's kind of a given. Anyways, but uh, it is a little bit different in a lot of ways. Intro is yeah, pretty, pretty similar, but they do change a lot of things about the story. There is... Uh, I can't say much without going into spoilers. I'm trying real hard to protect you guys. I don't want to ruin it and piss you off. But uh, there is a lot of liberties taken with it, and some of the characters. Some of them are pretty much exactly what you'd expect. They didn't change at all. Others, they did change a little bit. Uh, now, uh, if you are thinking every single character from the first Mortal Kombat's in the game, <laughs> in the movie, <laughs> from the first Mortal Kombat game in the movie, they are not. Not all characters are present, so just kind of put that out there. The cinematography I thought was great. The special effects are really well done. This whole movie looks like it was filmed in Australia by the credits. A little help from uh, Canada, it looks like some of the production value. Really, really well done. I, I don't know, the fight scenes were well choreographed. The uh, special effects were awesome. Every time uh, Sub-Zero froze something, it looked really freaking cool. Uh, Scorpion looks awesome. All the characters look good in their own way. We know Raiden's in it. That was a given. His special effects are really good, so it's. I have nothing to complain about there. Uh, if now, as far as if you would like this or not, if you are a hardcore fan of this sh series and you just like whatever gets put out, you'll like this. If you are a hardcore fan of the original lore and get upset if they change anything, you're probably not going to like this. If you're a hardcore fan of the original movie and would get upset if they change anything. You're probably not going to like this. It doesn't exactly follow a tournament style setup where they're all just chilling on an island and waiting for fights to be kind of set for them. So that's probably as far as I'll go on spoiler territory on that. But uh, again, if you go with an open mind in this and understand it's a little bit different, they're trying to revamp it, I think you'll really enjoy this. Uh, could there be a sequel? Absolutely. There could easily be a sequel. But... Uh, all in all, I was very happy with it. I highly suggest you go watch it. Again, I watched it on HBO Max, but I would pay you to go to the theater to watch it. I think it was worth it. All right, so we'll stop there. <coughs> Excuse me. I've been trying to hold that cough off this whole time. Didn't tell. I'm going to get into the spoiler section now. So I'm going to count down from five, and then after that, we're going to get straight into spoilers. All right? So five, four, three, two, one. All right, so... Uh, now that we're in the spoiler section, the first thing everybody probably wonders about, Johnny Cage. Because he is the person that is not in this movie at all. But, there is a but. Because, uh, I know there's a little bit of uh, stuff jumping up and down about it. People getting upset. I, the director said some weird crap about it. But, uh, at the very end of the movie, uh, people are going to be recruiting for Earthrealm, so they need more fighters. You know, just like in the games. So Cole Young is walking through his uh, dojo or his uh, locker room in his dojo or fight ring, whatever it is. And when he walks past the poster, it zooms in on the poster, and it's a poster for one of Johnny Cage's movies. And it literally says, starring Johnny Cage. So uh, it's... And uh, Cole is saying that he's going to Hollywood to go recruit somebody. So if they are going to make a sequel for this... Johnny Cage is going to be a big deal about one of the characters being recruited, so I think that was a smart idea on them to kind of save it, since Cage was integral to the first game and movie. And uh, according to the current storyline in the games, Cage is kind of like a big Earthrealm savior. But uh, I, I am glad that they at least have that throwdown, so it's kind of a, okay, well, maybe we'll get them in the next one if they make a sequel, and I hope they do. <clears throat> Alright, so, uh, on to the characters. Cole Young... He is a descendant of Sub-Zero, Hanzo. What happened is, uh, just like in the original story, Bihan, or Sub-Zero, kills Scorpion way back when, like the, I don't know, feudal Japan era, 1600s, I think it was. And uh, there is a child left, Raiden saves the child, and uh, the descendant went down through, you know, the lines, and Cole Young is related to uh, Scorpion. That's the whole thing, and that's why they added this new character in there. So it's kind of cool. It changes it up a little bit. I'm not, I don't hate it. Uh, Sonya Blade, she is in this as well. The actress, uh, Jessica McNamee, I hope I pronounced that right. She plays a good enough Sonya Blade. Uh, cool. 
She's not a complete and total hard ass like you would expect, like in the games and stuff, but uh, she does Sonya Blade well enough. Uh, Kano, I thought he did an amazing job. Now they changed up Kano, he's more comic relief than a lot before, but dark comic relief. He's they basically they made him an Australian, but he's kind of that thuggish type guy. He just doesn't he doesn't give a crap at all. Uh, he's not as dark as in the games. Nowhere near as dark, but he is as rough and tumble or, you know, spits on things, doesn't care about that. So they definitely picked that up, but he's not quite as dark. And he is kind of uh, your typical stereotype in the movie. So maybe in the next movie, if he's in it, they'll make him a little darker. I don't know. We'll see. Raiden was awesome. He does not fight anybody. So don't expect a Raiden fight at all. Uh, the most he does is teleport Shang Tsung somewhere else. But he does not fight, so we don't get to see that. Jax, awesome. Uh, he's using a kel KSG right off the bat in uh, the show. And, of course, that's where he gets his arms gone. Now, if I remember correctly, in the game lore, Jax had his arms ripped off by Goro. Uh, that doesn't happen here. It's Sub-Zero freezes them and shatters them. But uh, he comes back, and he's got his mechanical arms from, I believe, it's Mortal Kombat 2 is when he gets those. But it looks awesome. It comes out very well. And uh, let's see, who's next? Uh, Liu Kang. Oh, and the guy that plays Jax, plays Jax to the T. Like, I don't know if they practiced it or not, but yeah, he's perfect as Jax. Liu Kang, that guy is also really good as it. Um, Liu Kang does not come across as the big savior of Earthrealm, like in the previous games or in the movie. He's very much a side character. He doesn't really... I mean, he fights some people and stuff like that, and he's got some amazing arts, but he doesn't really do much. He actually ends up training Cole, Sonya, and Kano. Yeah, I know, it's interesting about Kano. He pulls a backstab, which you would expect from him. Uh, let's see, uh, Shang Tsung, the guy that played him, it's, is it Kerry Takawa, I believe, is the guy that played him in the previous movie. It's like the idol that everyone kind of, you gotta play, if you're gonna be Shang Tsung, you gotta be right there. This guy did a good job. He did his own version of Shang Tsung, which, I mean, it's more closer to the games, but I think it was very well done. No problems at all. Sub-Zero, of course, Joe Taslim, perfect, Scorpion, perfect. Uh, Kung Lao was in this, played by Max Wang. Uh, he did a pretty good job as Kung Lao, kind of like the little bit of goody two-shoes, kind of arrogant, a little bit, kind of cocky, but does very well in there. Um, now, of course, spoilers, Kung Lao is one of the ones that dies in this movie, one of the good guys. So it's kind of a, oh, I didn't expect that. Shang Tsung gets him. Uh, Shang Tsung actually does not fight anyone. All When Kung Lao, all he does is suck out his soul. <laughs> um, Melina is in this, played by Sissy Stringer. Hoping to pronounce that right. She does a great Melina. Um, they took some liberties with her. She looks very different, but more creepy, I think, in this one, in a way. But uh, realistic, I think they're trying to save money on budget with her. But, uh, yeah, she did a good Melina, good fight scenes with her. Now, uh, some of the side characters, Nitara is in this. I believe she's from Mortal Kombat 3. It's that succubus-looking lady with the bat wings. She's not in it long. <laughs> uh, Kung Lao takes her out. Uh, that's one thing I'm going to say. The, the fatalities in this movie are very well done. It's very gory. Awesome. I probably should have said it at the beginning part, but I'm saying it now. Really good there. Uh, they have the fatalities from the game almost perfectly. Yeah, Nitara's not in it very long. They have Raiko in it. He ends up going against uh, Jax. But uh, yeah, he's kind of in some side scenes. You, you probably know the actor too. If you see him, you know where he's been. He's always a big, strong man. Uh, who are these others? Uh, Cabal is in it. He actually plays a decent uh, part. And he's a pretty good Cabal in it too. Kind of a smart ass. Looks very intimidating. They got him down perfectly. Uh, who else is in it? That's, for the most part, all of it. Of course, just like the original, Sonya kills Kano. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. I don't want to just go listing who kills what and all that. But uh, all in all, it's great. Uh, Scorpion does come back from hell, just like in the games. And uh, he helps Cole to take out Sub-Zero. Really cool fight scene there, too. And the cool thing is uh, Scorpion's fatality, the face mask rip, or head rip where it's the skull and he does the flames. It's in there and he does it. And uh, the cool thing about it is they changed it. He doesn't rip off his face and it's a skeleton head. He blows the fire out and the face kind of disintegrates away to the skull underneath. It's really cool looking. I really enjoyed that. It was a cool effect. I don't know. I had the nostalgia feels throughout this whole movie. But 
yeah, I'll stop there because I'm just going to keep going on ranting. This is already long enough. Uh, I highly suggest you go watch this movie. I really enjoyed it. I think you guys will too, unless you're like super hardcore about the lore, then you might get a little upset. But uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, let me know what you think in the comment section. Do you hate it? Do you love it? What about it did you like? So on and so forth. But uh, that's all I got. I will talk to you guys in the next video. But until then, take it easy. Later, guys.